All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be continuing some footage from the MTG M21 streamer event. So thank you very much to Wizards of the Coast for inviting me to the said event. It was a lot of fun to partake in, and today's deck is going to be one that I built, actually wondering whether or not it was going to be uh, somewhat of a tier list, and I'm still, uh, still unsure. I think the version that I've built at the moment is not quite what it probably will look like if it was anywhere close to tier one or at least good tier two anyway and this deck is gonna be eugene dot deck built around the card eugene the spirit dragon eight mana for a seven loyalty planeswalker the plus two is uh deal three damage to any target the minus x is the one you usually always lead off with exiling each permanent with converting my cost x or less that's one or more colors so basically a board wipe uh that's Usually, you can set it up to be pretty one-sided, to be fair, but um, a lot of the times you probably want a minus five and get rid of your Nissas and your Cavaliers, but it's not the end of the world, because you usually just win anyway. And then the minus ten, extremely easy to get to. Gain seven life, draw seven cards, and put seven permanents from your hand onto the battlefield, which can include another Eugene the Spirit Dragon to reset his loyalty back to seven. Probably up to nine with the plus two, so you can go and ult two turns from that point forward this is a busted card it's a pretty expensive card i think for paper so it's a really good reprint i just don't know whether or not in the simic ramp uh side of things when magic green is concerned where we've got too many ramp payoffs i'm not sure if this card needed to be printed into standard to be honest but here we are so yeah i really want to build around eugene and get him into play as early as possible so there is no other way than in simic ramp so this, uh, this deck's not going to be for, for everyone, uh, particularly for the viewers that I have on this channel. Uh, we tend to go for the janky side of things, but from time to time, I do like to occasionally check out, you know, something on the higher power end. And yeah, this is this is what I went with. Uh, as I mentioned, I do think that this deck can probably shift a little bit. Uh, in terms of um, how it's built. Specifically, I think a Leyline version. If any of you have seen my Leyline Mega Ramp deck that's built around kind of Nisu Shakes the World coming out on turn three with Leyline of Abundances. And in Historic, we've got uh, Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. I think that's another way that you could build this deck. Go down the Wolf Willow Havens and go up some more Mana Dorks, things like that. Uh, historic does have the advantage of eight turn one uh, mana docks with Lana War Elves, but uh, I think in standard you could probably still do it quick enough by having like Paradise Druid and Incubation Druid or something like that and ramping into an early Nissa into an early Eugene as well. But yeah, um, this one's not going to be for everyone. I imagine not everyone's going to like it, so uh, if you want to leave your dislikes now, go ahead and do that. I'm sure you've already done it, but... Uh, you know, we're just going to be playing with Eugene the Spirit Dragon. So we've got a lot of cool games lined up. Uh, this deck did okay. As I mentioned, I think there's probably a better variation of this list, but this is the one I ended up going with. We've got brand new Scavenging Ooze from M21 as well. Two mana, two, two. Exile a card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, you put a 1-1 counter on the Ooze and gain one life. It's a very good car counter to your boy Uro, which also made its way into the list as well, because it's just very decent at getting your mana ramping up. Obviously, Cavalier doing the same thing, and Nissa doubling all your lands. Uh, we've basically got all forests in this deck as well, just to heavily leverage Nissa who shakes the world. Not sure if that's exactly the balance you should have. Uh, it's possible that a couple of islands in here to make sure that Growth Spiral on two is definitely possible without having to use your Gilded Goose. That might be a little bit more correct. Uh, but, you know, this is the list we went with, and I had a lot of fun with it in its own degenerate possible tier one kind of way. So, hopefully you guys enjoy the gameplay. If you do, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, or a dislike. It helps my channel either way. So, uh, go ahead and do that, and I'll see you all in the games. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below, or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty, we're in. And this sounds fine. It's not got the best payoff in the world, but we don't have the best ramp in the world, so 
I'll take a, a mid-level ramp card as a payoff and some mid-level ramp cards, I guess, as uh, as what we've got. What are we going up against? If we're, if we're dealing with mono-red shenanigans, this hand's not going to be good enough. Although, maybe an early cavalier. Who knows? Breeding pool. It might be a mirror match. Certainly possible. Land and go. Okay, well, we're going to go Paradise Druid. We're going to hope to god our opponent in playing Quench. Cycles Migration Path. Okay. I believe this to be a differently built mirror match. Cultivate. Island and a forest. Yeah, it's definitely Simic Ramp. I mean, it speaks for itself, really, doesn't it? All right, I'm going to grow a spiral. Get the forest into play. We've got Ugin. It's actually a pretty good hand, actually, now. Opponent's going for more ramp. They're just going to go straight for the land ramp, it seems. Which is interesting. All right. So we can play around Quench, right? I mean, you probably just want to go Nissa, I think. Three, six, seven mana next turn. So they don't have enough for Eugene the Spirit Dragon. So don't really have to worry about that necessarily. If I went with Nissa, who shakes the world, I've only got four mana. One, two, four, yeah. So it might be worth just going for like a Cavalier or a Eugene. We'll go for Eugene. We'll throw that one out there. I'm a little concerned about the random odd counter spell, but who knows. Let's just get drawing some cards, I suppose. More lands. Eh. Not against that. So yeah, Eugene the Spirit Dragon only gets rid of color, uh, colored cards, so... Our Eugene here is pretty safe from that. But we don't want to commit too heavily into it, of course. Khan the Great Creator. That could be a huge oof. Uh, what's the new artifacts that have been shown? Or do you just go for a Godfarer statue? Sorceress, Spyglass. Alright. So... Not much we can do about that, unfortunately. I think once they've named something, it's done. Can't minus on Khan. So we'll just tick up with Eugene. That's pretty much a given. And, yeah, I really want to leave my Eugene as kind of a payoff card here, I think. So we're just going to go with Nyssa. Untap a land and send it at Khan. So they can't get more stuff. And then we'll send two here. Two here. So they can Spyglass my Nyssa, but it's the passive that I really want. They could Spyglass Eugene the Ineffable, and then I've got the Spirit Dragon ready to go. It's getting a cost reduction off of Eugene as well, because he makes colorless cards cost less, which is fantastic. So I think we're in a reasonably good spot. Opponent could blind pick Eugene. Well, actually, it's not really a blind pick, is it? Because Spyglass lets them look at my hand. Forgot about that little tidbit of information. Gets rid of... Nissa. And then if they name Eugene the Ineffable, they can't use their own. And I'm gonna kill theirs as well, I think. Yeah, easily. So, Eugene the Spirit Dragon gets named. Well, doesn't really matter either way, I suppose. But I think this has got the more of the inevitability of victory than uh, little, little Eugene has. Gonna go with Spirit Dragon. So this card doesn't work. There's no reason to play it. And a solemn to block. This is fine. Alright. Again, can't actually uh, kill that with Eugene's Minus, which is fascinating. Uh, so we're going to go with a swing that makes sure that Eugene is dead in case I've got a flash creature out. Just don't want him in the battlefield anymore. And they can block a token. I'll get a land drop. Or they can just chump. It's up to them. I imagine they want to block a 2-2, two -two, right? Not sure how I get that block. 
but that is entirely up to them. Alright, so let's go with the Cavalier of Thorns. Fortunately for us, most of our board right now is colorless, so if they have a Spirit Dragon their own, not only can they not use it because they've named it, uh, but it doesn't really do anything either. Let's tick up. Got another growth spiral. Looking for another blue source, actually. So we can escape Uro. Yep, that card does not work. You have named it. Yep. Sorcerer's Spyglass shuts off all Eugene the Spirit Dragons. So they're just going to play an Uro. Which I wish I could do. I don't have my... Uh, double blue right now. It's maybe a concern of the mana base that I might have to fix. I really just tried not to put as many forests in the deck as possible, but it doesn't seem like that's actually an option. Uh, so on the off chance they can get that out of there, we'll get rid of that. And then we'll send the rest our opponent. We shall play Cavalier. And then we've got this Paradise Druid to escape an Uro as well. Ooh, Breeding Pool. Uh, which will put into play tapped. Can't Uro off of that just yet. Take up, make more colorless sources. It's actually a pretty decent mirror game, I suppose, um, for Simic Ramp decks like this. Since my Eugene beats their Eugene, and this Eugene doesn't get rid of the other Eugene, so there's kind of like a non-interactivity, I guess, to the whole thing in a fun sort of way, depending on your perspective, I suppose. All right, so we've got lethal just as soon as we get to minus on Uro. Eugene kills Cavalier. Cavalier gets me... I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? Let's just get a Nissa. Take the action. So we'll draw Nissa next turn. I'm going to kill Uro. We got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep, more than enough to kill our opponent here. Even if they had something like a Spectral Sailor. Good stuff. Alrighty then, we're in, and this hand looks fine, although it doesn't ramp exceptionally well. It does have a turn one temple into a paradise druid, so maybe we can use this scry to find some exceptional ramp. Who knows? We definitely set up for a, a decent Uro. And yeah, I think we're really just looking for Nissa, to be honest. Oh, hello. How's it going? Alright. Good start, I guess. Opponent with Watery Grave for that turn 2 Thought Erasure incoming. So, no early Nyssa and no early Eugene, it seems. Yeah, Island Thought Erasure. Ooh, Benthic Biomancer. My goodness. I mean, I totally, totally deserve uh, getting Thought Erasured. Don't get me wrong. I think we're just going to go with the Scavenging Ooze and Paradise Druid here. The reason I want Scavenging Ooze out is because when this adapts, it actually discards cards. So they're really uh, not incentivized to put any more creatures in the bin, if that is indeed what they're going for. Looks maybe like a Reanimator list that's using this adapt to put a big creature in. I know we've had a, a fair few uh, Reanimator pieces actually in M21. Uh, obsessive someone. I can't remember. There's a three mana which has a draw and discard on its creature. So I'm assuming we're leveraging that somewhat. It also, I think, pays four. Oh, Teferi's Tutelage. Draw a card, then discard a card. Oh. Okay, well, that's actually maybe going to benefit us a fair bit since we have Uro in our deck. We're going to be rolling that over. Let's see what Mill can do. It's blue black mill as well, which is weird. Sublime Epiphany. Another new card. Alright, so we're just gonna go... Uh, is there any way we can... No. I'm seeing if we could get more mana out of it. I don't think we can get 
enough mana for it to matter. So let's get in, get in. Keep our mana dock around. Although I don't know if we actually want it around because Eugene's going to mine us on this Teferi's Tutelage eventually. And you draw a card, or opponent mills two cards. Hit me some creatures I don't want. There you go. It's good stuff. Well, they might have Drown in the Lock. So, eating my own graveyard is definitely something I want to do. Though, Drown in the Lock against uh, an 8 mana card is very unlikely to actually happen. But, later in the game it certainly is. So, we might be incentivized to scooze our own uh, graveyard away. That being said, we're hurting Uro a little bit in that action as well. So it's a bit of a give and take there. Let's see what we end up doing. I think we're just passing. We are just passing. Alright, so I'm going to eat my Gilded Goose. Put a counter on the Scavenging Ooze. And then I'm going to eat their graveyard, because other than my creatures in my yard, everything else kind of matters. I'm in no rush to actually cast Uro either. Because I think I have the winning board state as it currently stands, so there's really no incentive for me to play anything here. Um, I mean, yeah, just be running into a ritual of soot with a scavenging ooze. I could try for a Eugene. I could try the turn after as well. Two, four... Mm. Let's just go for a forest and start swinging. So we got two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's see what they want to do. I'd love to see them go for the. Oh yeah, they've just lost. Okay. I'd love to just see them go for anything that taps them out. So we'll get in. And then we'll we'll get Eugene down. Take him to nine. I think we're just ticking up, to be honest. Just work our way towards that ult, maybe. Because if I minus three to get rid of the Teferi's Tutelage, I'm also getting rid of my Scavenging Ooze and Paradise Druids. Which definitely doesn't seem worthwhile. And now Ooze has got a Biomancer trigger. This is just a nightmare matchup for them all around. That's why I don't think Mill's really going to be a thing, but we're still going to try and play it later on today anyway. It's just going to blow up my Scavenging Ooze and my Paradise Druids. Alright, well, I'm going to eat your Biomancer before he goes. But yeah, that's game. I already got lethal on board, so I'm not going to mess around anymore. We've also got a lightning bolt on Eugene, who's then ready to ult the turn after. We've got another three points with the Nissa. And I think we've even... Yeah, our opponent gave us an Uro activation as well, so we can get that out of the yard. It's just uh, pretty much a raffle stomp, as the kids would call it. Alrighty then, we're in, and this looks about as keepable as a hand could be. We've got lots of turn 2 ramp into an Uro. We've got the mana to cast him as well. And our opponent leads off with a Healer's Hawk. Okay, so we want to be looking for payoffs here. Is a Cavalier? I guess a Cavalier is somewhat of a payoff. We can ramp straight into it, to be fair. And Daxos. Alright, we're trying a Soul Sisters style deck, I guess. Alright, I am going to go with a forest, and I'm a little torn on which one I should go with here as far as Wolf Willow Haven or Paradise Druid is concerned. I guess it should be Paradise Druid, because it's the one that's hard to interact with. Not that I really think that's actually going to be a factor. You never know. Maybe our opponent doesn't want to swing through because I've got this two-powered creature. Who knows? I doubt it. Ooh, and Speaker of the Heavens, the reason why we're playing this deck. Create a 4-4, and if you have 7 more life than your starting life total, you get to um, get to do it. <laughs> so there's that. Alright, Eugene's going to really close out this game in a nutshell. 
shouldn't be too difficult to pull off. So we're going to go with Uro. Gain some life. And then play a Wolf Willow Haven. Slap it there. And then hope for the best. We got three, four, five, six. Linden. Yeah, this game might be over because of the Pride Mate alone. We'll really have to see. I don't know if I can survive this. Also vigilant on the speaker now, so they can make a 4-4 on the end of turn. Yep, 5 power in the air. We're just a little too slow. How weird. But that's, that's how it do. That is how it be. Let's have a look what Cavalier would reveal. Lots of mana docks and lands that don't matter. And yeah, we're just dead to the go-wide strategy, unfortunately. And that'll do it. Alrighty then, we're in on the play, and this hand's fine-ish. We're gonna go with it. Let's do this. We'll go turn one Gilded Goose. And say hello. Oh, it's Theric Six. Hello, my friend. Temple of Abandon. Alright. So, some sort of aggression deck, maybe? I don't know. We could be memeing. Definitely could see some memes going on. Definitely put the land to the bottom. There's really no reason to do that. Send a message. You know the drill. And Scavenging Ooze. Okay, so our Uro is effectively offline now. That's a given. And yeah, pass the turn. Make a food token for the Gilded Goose so we can use it again if we get the opportunity to. Could get stomped by a Boon Crusher Giant. Rada. Look at the top card of your library anytime you may play lands. Ooh. I deeply hope my opponent wins, because mine's more of the generate net decky kind. For more educational purposes rather than jank purposes. You know me, I don't usually run de like, decks like this, but I feel like every streamer event I have to put in at least like one deck that does something awesome. Oh, I say something awesome, something extremely powerful. Um. <sighs> Doesn't really do anything that we have to care about, right? It just kind of has first strike. Let's just go with the Cavalier so we've got an extra blocker. And a temple to set up our next draw. Looking for Eugene the Spirit Dragon. Nope. Got an Uro in the yard, so there's that. But they have a scavenging ooze. I think it goes without saying. It's not really a, not really an option for us. Even if we could get it out of the yard. Azusa, lost but seeking. So they get to make three land drops now? Does Rada have a land on top? Rada does. One to the top, so it's another land. Fable Passage. If it's not a land, they'll probably crack it. It's a cool little deck. Plus X plus X, where X is the number of lands you control. It's nice. It is nice. Alright, let's have a look, see. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll get down a good old Eugene. I think we've got to kill Rada. As much as uh, I don't want to fun police my opponent. It's kind of it's kind of what has to happen, I'm afraid. Goodbye, Rada. You are performing too well for my liking. <laughs> and we're out. All right, so they can kill Eugene with an attack, but they'll have to lose their Azusa or their scavenging use. Probably kill their Azusa, really. It seems like a combo piece worth uh, worth dealing with. It's all dependent on uh, if they can get rid of the Gilded Goose, though, I suppose. If they can do that, then we've got issues. There goes Uro. Ooze becomes a 3-3. I think Rad is the only other creature now. Oh, no, we've got loads. Good lord. So I guess they're considering now whether or not they want to crack that Fable Passage for another Ooze activation to be mana efficient, or if they want to use it to set up the top card of their library with another Radder. 
certainly is a tough decision. Gonna go for it. A foodist. And then eat my paradise druids. Yep, yep, yep. I'll just jump with a gilded goose. My goose has done enough. And then from there we can make Eugene tokens, which basically draw us cards when we chump block, which is lovely. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's a sweet card. I'll give it that. I'll give it that. It's a shame it only gives Radha the plus X plus X, because it doesn't really have evasion. It only has first strike, really, so it becomes a big boy. But... Not big enough. Alright, so they can scooze me to death. So I'm just going to chump with my Gilded Goose here. It's an easy block for me. So we know they've got the activations. Ooh. Elder Gargoth. It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> that's better. Uh, okay, so we go... Tick. Flow. Unflow. Eugene, the spirit dragon. What do we have to minus five? Yeah, after minus five. It's a shame because we are going to lose our Cavalier of Thorns, but we get to keep our colorless tokens and our forests as well. Minus five. Everything's gone. Get rid of my graveyard first as well. Smart plan. Definitely don't want that Uro coming back later down the line. Goodbye, Nissa, as well. I don't need you anymore. I have the board of all boards. There we go. Double Eugene. It's pretty much unbeatable, right? I believe it will be. Got scavenging ooze of our own underneath. Right here. Questing beast. Alright, that's annoying. Tis for sure. Does I actually have to block with a forest? Send it at me, yep. Okay, so we go to blockers. We could double block it. I'm not sure if that's a good idea, though I don't know how I'm going to kill it otherwise. So let's just make two twos and then bolt our opponent constantly with Eugene. And get rid of the questing beast. Another scavenging ooze, sure. I think our tokens and our ticking up with Eugene's just going to be good enough. Another Eugene. Okay, so we tick up. We tick up on Scavenge News, I guess. Eats our Gilded Goose. Comes a 3 3 and then takes 3 damage. And then we play New Eugene. Because he's bigger. And he makes another 2 2. So I think we're kind of in that situation now where we're uh, almost just digging our way out of the card disadvantage we find ourselves in. The only real thing we have to worry about now is another questing beast, because that will kill Eugene the Spirit Dragon. But then uh, Eugene the Ineffable can kill that instead. Alright, so we go Cavalier. Grab a forest. Get an Uro in the yards. Eugene kills Gargoth. Tick up on our opponent. Good game. Yeah, I think Eugene the Spirit Dragon just kind of locks you straight out of this game. Just, it's unbelievable that they printed this card into standard. Ah, I say it's unbelievable. It's it's to be expected, really, isn't it? Like, it, ramp payoffs are already that bad that you might as well. And I'm sure this is an expensive card as well, since it gets played in, uh, in Tron in Modern as well, so it's... It's a really valuable reprint nonetheless, but very silly that it's in Magic Arena right now. <laughs> just don't get it. But whatever. Next game.
Alrighty then, we're in. And we don't have any blue mana for Uro, which is an upsetting part about this hand, but Wolf Willow into Cavalier into Nissa seems decent enough anyway. I imagine we can get there easy enough. So we do want to find a Gilded Goose or a Paradise Druid so we can enable this Uro. That would be the ideal draw. I think that's the Teamer. It is the Teamer Triome. Alright. Joriel. Or Jolrail? 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 Coral! That one. Monvuli Recluse. Two mana, one, two. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2 2 green cat creature token. Pay six until the end of your turn. Creatures you control have base, power, and toughness. XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Opponent growth spirals and makes a 2 2 cat. It's an interesting cat token. Not really seen one that's just right in your face before. Alright, so we got a temple. I guess we might as well take another temple. I mean, we've got five drops to choose from. Which which one do we want to play? And that's basically the only thing we're going to do for that turn. I guess we'll go with Cavalier because it's the better blocker for the Nissa. Also doesn't get Pyromancer, I suppose, as well. As a bit of an upside. Not getting in with the Jolreel is interesting. Alright, well, I'm going to go with me Nissa. I'm going to go with me Temple. And another land. Uh, probably not. Probably not. I don't know whether I want to... <laughs> the thing is, it's weird to tick up because, like, whatever I tick up on is going to die. But I kind of have to incentivize them doing that rather than hitting Nissa, I guess. I accidentally wasted my opponent's time there. Apologies upon him. Yeah, this is a weird one. If we go, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. We do have enough for um, Eugene the Spirit Dragon, should he pop up. Sweet deck from our opponent, for sure. I hope it beats me, because my deck is not as sweet. And I would like for things like my opponent's playing to be good. I wish this is what standard would always look like. For the realm. For the realm. Ow. Ow. We got a land. Alright, it's not great. It is not great. We'll go with an Uro. We'll see if we can find anything interesting. Nope. Alright. And we'll play Cavalier of Thorns, see if we can find anything interesting. A breeding pool, and there's a Eugene the ineff Ineffable. It's not quite what I had in mind. It's two, four, five. Yeah, we'll pay for this. Play another Cavalier. Uh, still not Eugene the Spirit Dragon. It's got to be in there somewhere. And then again, like we're just we're just ticking up for the sake of it on that one. So this time I'm not actually gonna. I'm not actually going to stop them from attacking Nissa. She's dead regardless. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what's going to happen. They got the. They do not have enough for the Uro, but they do have the Royal Science tick up, which will trigger the Pyromancer anyway, and make them a two-two. Yep. So draw and discard. Breeding poo into the yard. Hmm. Yeah, I fear for my opponent because all I have to do is find 8 mana Eugene and they lose. Everything that they've got here can go with a minus 3. And that's uh, it's, it's not ideal. <laughs> not ideal at all for them. And case in point, minus 3 time. Unless they've got a counter spell. Do you have a counter spell? It's a reason why I should have maybe gone with Nissa first. Seems to not be an issue though. One, two, three. Uh, that kills everything. Yeah. Everything that's coloured, three mana cost or less, is now gone and our opponents decided that is enough and I would be inclined to agree with them. I think we've got an empty board to swing for ten and then they basically try to rebuild while I'm lightning bolting them constantly killing and swinging for another 10 so I should have them dead in the next two turns no matter what happens really uh, so yeah GG